What is going on, guys? We are doing the full set review for Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth, the modern horizons of Hobbiton, if you will. We, oh, I hiccuped. Uh, we are moving on to black. We're going through all of the cards, almost 300 of them. Um, we've done blue, we've done white. There's some pretty exciting stuff. So let's get straight to black and find out what awaits us. Oh no, I've got the hiccups now. First up, we have Bitter Downfall, which is three and a black for an instant. This spell costs three less to cast if it targets a creature that was dealt damage this turn. Destroy target creature, its controller loses two life. Dang. Um, and this is Boromir getting murdered in the forest. Uh, that's rough. Um, that's pretty good, actually. So four mana kill something, its controller loses two life. But if this is post combat and something took damage this turn, um, you can kill it for one mana for one black. That's really good. That's really, really good. Um, it's like a, a better version of that. You're already dead. Um, Com post combat ability I really like that next up we have the black breath two and a black for a sorcery creatures your opponents control get minus one minus one till end of turn and the ring tempts you that's really expensive for only minus one minus one not great the ring tempting you and sorcery speed also not great um, yeah that's subpar Next up, we have Call of the Ring. Oh, this is that art we were looking at earlier. Call of the Ring is one and a black for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, the ring tempts you. Whenever you choose a creature as your ring bearer, you may pay two life if you do draw a card. That's pretty good. So this just automatically sets up the ring tempting you a bunch over and over again. Uh, there's only four levels to the ring tempting you, so you could max level this by turn six. That's pretty good without casting anything else. There's a lot of things that say the ring tempts you on the card. Just on its own, this maxes out your ring turn six really strong. Next up, we have Sirith or Kirith Ungol. Sirith Ungol Patrol. Four and a black for a four five orc soldier creature with pay one, tap it, sacrifice another creature, draw a card, and create a food. That's pretty good. It's expensive and it can block well. It's a great sacrifice outlet. Um, if your deck cares about food or sacrificing tokens, this is gonna be very, very good. Um, in a limited environment, if you're drafting, this is gonna take some working around, but I think it's very promising. Next up, we have Claim the Precious. Oh no. What happened? There's a guy in the bush got moited claim the precious is one black black for a sorcery distort destroy target creature the ring tempts you so another kill spell very strong uh next up we have dunland crebane 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 two and a black for a one one bird horror creature with flying whenever dunland crebane enters the battlefield amass orcs too that's pretty decent. If you've got horror synergies or amass synergies, that's pretty good. It is only a 1-1 one, one for 3, um, but I think you care more about the triggers than anything else. Uh, next up, we have Easterling Vanguard. One and a black for a 2-1 human warrior creature. When Easterling Vanguard dies, amass orcs 1. Pretty cool. Next up, we have Gollum Patient Plotter. One black for a 3-1 halfling horror legendary creature. Of course they made Gollum a horror. When Gollum, a patient plotter, leaves the battlefield, the ring tempts you. You can pay a black, sacrifice a creature, return Gollum from your graveyard to your hand, activate only as a sorcery. That's pretty decent. The fact that you have to sacrifice a creature is a little rough, but if you're making tokens of something, um, that's not too much to ask. 
all you're really doing is trying to recur Gollum leaving so that the ring tempts you a bunch. Um, but again, as soon as you get the ring to level four, the only reason why you would want the ring to tempt you is to choose a different ring bearer, um, which is which is smart. Next up, we have Gollum's Bite. Oh, that's horrifying art. One black for an instant. Target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. Three and a black. Exile Gollum's Bite from your graveyard. The ring tempts you. Activate only as a sorcery. Very interesting. You see Frodo there. Or Bilbo. Uh, Bilbo, who's invisible, is getting bitten by Gollum. Next up, we have Gorebag of minus Morgul. Morgul. Minus Morgul. Gorebag. What a name. One in a black for a 2-2 orc soldier legendary creature. Whenever a goblin or orc you control deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice it. When you do, you choose one. Either draw a card or create a treasure token. So that's really cool if you've got uh, an amass orcs thing going on. You can continuously sacrifice your orc army uh, to create treasure tokens or draw cards. Very interesting. Next up, we have Gore Gothmog. Gorebag and Gothmog. What a pair. Morgul Lieutenant. Three and a black for a 3 3 human soldier, legendary creature. When Gothmog enters the battlefield, amass orcs one. Creature tokens you control have death touch. Very, very cool. Um, I like the death touch anthem in general, especially if you're making an orc deck. Um, where all of your orcs, most of your orcs are going to be tokens. Um, very neat. Next up, we have Grima Wormtongue. Three and a black for a 1-4 human advisor, legendary creature. Isn't that a Harry Potter character? No? Sorry, I'm going to sneeze. I'm trying not to sneeze. Um, Wormtongue says your opponents can't gain life. You can tap it, sacrifice another creature, target player loses one life. If the sacrificed creature was legendary, amass orcs too. Interesting. Next up we have Grand the Gatebreaker, our first vehicle. Three and a black for a 5-5 five, five vehicle legendary artifact with trample. As long as it's your turn and you control an army, Grand the Gatebreaker is an artifact creature. It also has crew three. So if you have an army, you just have a 5-5 five, five with Trample. You don't have to crew it at all. That's really strong. Uh, next up, we have Haunt of the Dead Marshes. That is haunting. One black for a 1-1 one, one Nightmare Elf creature. When Haunt of the Dead Marshes enters the battlefield, scry one. That's pretty good. Two and a black return Haunt of the Dead Marshes from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Activate only if you control a legendary creature. That's pretty doable. That's pretty doable. Next up we have Isildur's Fateful Strike. Isildur's Fateful Strike. Two black black for a legendary instant. Legendary instant? You may cast legendary instants only if you control a legendary creature or planeswalker. Have they ever made legendary instants before? I'm looking this up. Um, where am I? Advanced. Type line. Legendary. Instant. This is the only legendary instant in existence according to Scryfall. That is crazy. Destroy target creature. If its controller has more than four cards in hand, they exile cards from their hand equal to the difference. So if they have seven cards in their hand, they have to exile three cards. And they lose a creature. Damn. This legendary instant thing is freaking cool. I love having a random stipulation on.
on a card like that, you have to control a legendary creature or planeswalker. That's one thing we haven't seen so far, planeswalkers from this set. Are we going to have planeswalkers? I don't... Can anyone in the Lord of the Rings franchise walk through planes? Actually, maybe. If you consider, like, the living world and the spiritual world. No? Next up, we have Lash of the Balrog. One black for a sorcery in addition... As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature or pay four. Destroy target creature. That's just not good. Um, that is not a strong card. Um, unless you have something really cheap to sacrifice and you can still you still pay the one for it. Um, what is Bone Splinters? Bone Splinters is cheaper than that, no? Bone Splinters is one mana as an additional cost to cast this. Oh, you have to sacrifice a creature. Okay. So you can't pay the additional four with Bone Splinters. But it's basically the same thing. Um, I mean, I guess if you have the mana, if you have extra mana, you might as well pay the four. Bone Splinters, you have to sacrifice a creature. This one you don't have to, technically. I guess that's fine. I'm not excited by it. It's not very good, but uh, next up we have Lo Lobelia Sackville Baggins. Two and a black for a two three halfling citizen legendary creature. Lobelia. Anyway, I'm gonna continue to apologize for butchering these Tolkien names. Um, Lobelia has flash and menace. When Lobelia enters the battlefield, exile target creature card from an opponent's graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn, then create X treasure tokens where X is the exiled card's power. That's pretty cool. So you play this post-combat. If you exile something with like nine power, you get nine treasure tokens just for playing this and exiling it. That's pretty neat. I like that. Next up, we have Mirkwood Bats, three and a black for a 2-3 bat creature with flying. Whenever you create or sacrifice a token, each opponent loses one life. That is going to get out of hand. This card is going to get weird. And people are going to take grand advantage of that. Whenever you create or sacrifice, and there's no stipulation on how many times this can happen in a turn, I think this is going to be quite a powerful un or um common i don't know you have to there's a lot to play around if you're drafting this set i don't know if markwood bats seems that great in draft unless you've already got something going that creates tokens but amassing orcs is creating a token sometimes um sacrificing your tokens is sacrificing obviously uh, all the food triggers in this set um, are all creating and sacrificing um, tokens. That's really cool. I think this is going to be out of hand in Commander for sure. Draft, you have to do a little bit more work to kind of make it really, really powerful. But I think this is a really cool card. Uh, next up, we have Mordor Muster. One and a black for a sorcery. You draw a card and lose a life. Amass Orcs one. That's pretty pretty simple could be useful uh sorcery speed so not that useful but uh you know playing this before combat maybe see if you draw something worthwhile uh next up is mordor trebuchet two and a that's actually like sunshine on mordor in this art two and a black for a one four wall artifact creature with defender Whenever you attack with one or more goblins and or orcs, create a 2-1 colorless construct artifact creature token named flying with flying named ballistic boulder that's tapped and attacking sacrifice that token at the end of combat. So if, as long as you're attacking with goblins or orcs or both, uh, you get an extra 2-1 attacking creature thing. It's technically just a rock, but um, that's cool. Next up, we have Morgul Knife Wound. Morgul Knife Wound. One in a black for an enchantment aura enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets minus three, minus O, and has, at the beginning of your upkeep, exile this creature unless you pay two life. So that's pretty good. You shut down your opponent's best creature. 
Um, I mean, shut it down. If it has more than three power, then you're just making it weaker. Um, but your opponent is inclined to exile it, so it's no longer in the game. I think that's pretty good. Next up, we have Nasty End. One in a black for an instant. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature, draw two cards. If the sacrifice creature was legendary, draw three cards instead. Um, that's that's okay. It's draw cards version of Bone Splinters. Um, I don't love it, but pay two to draw two and sacrifice something that might be like cheap and useless. That's all right. Uh, next up, we have Nazgul. Uh, two and a black for a 1-2 Wraith Knight creature with Death Touch. Whenever Nazgul enters the battlefield, the ring tempts you. Whenever the ring tempts you, you put a 1-1 one -one counter on each Wraith you control. A deck can have up to nine cards named Nazgul. And I think at the bottom of this folder is all nine versions. Spoiler alerts, we're going to be... Um, we're going to be brewing a ring race deck on stream this week sometime i haven't decided when but i'm very this is the deck i've decided i'm going to build for the lord of the rings uh launch other than you know having fun with limited environments but i'm going to build a nazgul ring race deck and we're going to do it on stream so if you're not following the stream give it a follow we're going to make it on uh, moxfield and put something really cool together before the launch Next up, we have Oath of the Grey Host. Oh, man, look at that art. Very cool. Three and a black for an enchantment saga. Chapter one, you and target opponent each create a food token. Oh, nice. That's nice. Chapter two, each opponent loses three life, create a treasure token. So everyone loses three, you get a treasure. Not bad. Chapter three, create three tapped 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying. That's not bad either. But for four mana, it's, a, it's really slow. Um, I don't love it, but it's okay. If you if you need the tokens, for sure. This is a great card if you need the tokens. Uh, the next one is the one ring to rule them all. Two black black for another enchantment saga. Chapter one, the ring tempts you. Then each player mills cards equal to your ring bearer's power. Very cool. So the ring tempts you first. You can choose your strongest creature as your ring bearer then each player mills cards equal to that creature's power um, there's a really neat way to set that up to be really devastating uh, chapter two destroy all non-legendary creatures that is big that's like a two turn clock on a board wipe for only four mana uh, chapter three each opponent loses one life for each creature card in that player's graveyard wow wow Okay, this card is fantastic. This is scary. Um, are we putting it in our ring race deck? You'll have to tune in later to find out. Um, spoiler alert, probably. It's really good. Uh, yep. That's a really good card. Four mana for a ring tempt. Player's mill. Turn two. Well, the second turn you play it so turn five destroy all non-legendary creatures hopefully you've set yourself up so that all of your creatures are legendary very very cool card uh next up is the one that everyone's been talking about orcish bowmasters is the not so sleeper hit of this entire set one in a black for a one one orc archer creature with flash when orcish bowmasters enters the battlefield and Whenever an opponent draws a card, except for the first one they drew uh, in each of their draw steps, Orcish Bowmaster draws one, deals one damage to any target, then a mass Orcs one. So anytime someone draws some a card that isn't their initial draw step, you get to deal one damage to anything, and a mass Orcs one. So your Orc army is going to continuously get bigger. You get to ping things. This is an insane card, um, especially in Commander when people are drawing huge lumps of cards at a time. Um, whenever an opponent draws a card, except for the first one, they draw in each of their draw steps. So as long as it's outside of their draw step, you're dealing one damage to anything 
and amassing your orc army. This card seems really, really broken. Um, and people are going, this is going to sell out. This is going to, this is going to be worth $30. This is a $30 orc archer. Everyone's been talking about it for weeks. It looks insane. Uh, next up we have orcish medicine. That is horrifying art. What the heck? Uh, one and a black for an instant target creature gains your choice of lifelink or indestructible until end of turn. Amass orcs one. Um, I like the lifelink indestructible combat tricks. This one comes with the added benefit of amassing your orc army, but that art, I'm never playing this card. That art is terrifying. I hate it. Get rid of it. Next up we have Sam's Desperate Rescue. Oh, Sam's turn into the dark side. One black for a sorcery, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand and the ring tempts you. Uh, pretty cool feels like something sam's doing a lot is returning things from the dead um which is an interesting twist for the soft little hobbit next up we have Saruma sauron the necromancer that is cool three black black for an avatar four four avatar horror legendary creature with menace whenever sauron the necromancer attacks Exile target creature card from your graveyard. Create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 3-3 black wraith with menace. At the beginning of your next end step, exile that token unless Sauron is your ring bearer. So you want Sauron to be your ring bearer, whereas the Gandalf one, you didn't want Gandalf to be your ring bearer. Very cool card. I like that a lot. Uh, next up is Shadow of the Enemy. Three black, black, black. Six mana for a sorcery. Exile all creature cards from target player's graveyard. You may cast spells from among those cards for as long as they remain exiled. And mana and use mana of any type can be spent. Mana of any type can be spent to cast them. That's pretty huge. Not gonna lie. Big deal. You get to exile all creature cards from someone's graveyard and you get to play them for the rest of the game um pretty cool next up we have shalobes ambush shalobs shalobes oh this is a spider boy one black for an instant target creature gets plus one plus two and gains death touch until end of turn create a food token yay eating people don't take that out of context Snarling Warg. Three and a black for a 3-4 wolf creature with menace. Really good. As long as you control a goblin or orc, Snarling Warg gets plus one plus O. Oh. So it's four mana for a 3-4 that should be a 4-4 four four because you should only be playing this if you control orcs or goblins. Um, and it has menace. I would pay four mana for a 4-4 four four with menace. It's just a pretty good deal. I'd say this card's above par. Next up is the Torment of Gollum. Three and a black for a sorcery. Look at him, all scared. Uh, target opponent reveals their hand. You chose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. Then amass orcs two. So this is Thoughtseize plus amass orcs. Not too bad. I guess it's like Pilfer, not Thoughtseize. You're not losing any life. Uh, next up, we have Troll of Khazad Doom. Five and a black for a 6 5 troll creature. Troll of Khazad Doom can't be blocked except by three or more creatures. Dang. And it has swamp cycling, so this is the black uh, version of the land cycling uh, cycle. Land cycling cycle. Pretty good. It's pretty fun. Six mana for a six five that has to be blocked by three or more creatures is pretty decent. Can't block it otherwise. Uh, next up is Uruk Hai Berserker. Two and a black for a three two orc berserker creature. When Uruk Hai Berserker enters the battlefield, the ring tempts you. Interesting. Next up is Voracious Fell Beast. Four black black for a four four Drake Beast creature with flying. Uh, when Voracious Fell Beast enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature. Create a food token for each creature sacrificed this way. 
So you could whiff on it if nobody has any creatures, but you'd probably just hold on to this until your opponents all have creatures and then play it. Because 4-4 four, four flying for 6 mana is just not worth it on its own. But if you get a bunch of food tokens, that's pretty good. Uh, next up, we have Witch King of Angmar. Three black black for a 5-3 Wraith Noble legendary creature with flying. Whenever one or more creatures deal combat damage to you, each opponent sacrifices a creature that dealt combat, combat damage to you this turn and the ring tempts you. Discard a card, Witch King of Angmar gains indestructible until end of turn and tap it. So you can stop it from being killed in combat or by burn spells. Um, but for the most part, you want damage to come through. For the, for the most part, you want damage to come through because then your opponents have to sacrifice things that they attacked you with. Um, this is pretty good. Gollum Scheming Guide is up next. One in a black for a 2-1 Halfling Horror legendary creature. When Go Gollum attacks, look at the top two cards of your library. Put, put them back in any order, then choose land or non-land. An opponent guesses whether the top card of your library is the chosen kind. Reveal that card. If they guessed right, remove Gollum from combat. Otherwise, you draw a card and Gollum can't be blocked this turn. Okay. Interesting. So you're kind of uh, playing riddles. Gollum is a big fan of, of riddles, so it's a kind of fun flavor win. It's a little complicated and wordy, um, but I think it's good. Next up, we have Witch King, Bringer of Ruin. Or how many Witch Kings are there? Um, four black black for a 5-3 Wraith Noble, legendary creature with flying. When Witch King, Bringer of Ruin attacks, defending player sacrifices a creature with the least power among creatures they control. That's pretty painful. And then we've got Nazgul. So these are the... Um, nine versions of the Nazgul. They've all, they're all the exact same cards, but they all have different art by different artists. Um, and any deck can have nine cards named Nazgul in them because of the nine ring race. It's very flavorful, very nice little flavor win. Um, to round out black, we have one more card, which is the March of the Black Gate, March from the Black Gate, sorry. Uh, one in a black for an enchantment when March of the Black Gate, March from the Black Gate, enters the battlefield. And whenever an army you control attacks, amass orcs one. Uh, this is a nice little enchantment that just brings you value over time. Um, and I think that that's very strong. Looking back on the things in the black color, I think the one ring to rule them all is really, really good. I think this card is real strong um, obviously Orcish Bowmasters is one of the most ridiculous uh, random creature cards ever made this card is bonkers and the fact that they're printing it is um, hilarious in a way uh, Shadow of the Enemy is very strong as well but it's a little pricey uh, Bitter Downfall I like a lot but yeah, I'm going to have to go with, um, what am I going with? I'm going to, I'm going to have to go with one ring to rule them all. I think or my choice in, I like the trebuchet is really fun. I think that's kind of flavorful. I like the Nazgul's because that's what I'm going to be building, uh, later this week. But I think one ring to rule them all. Very cool card. It's going to be very fun to play. Uh, that is my pick for black. We're going to take a quick bio break and we're going to jump right into red. We're going to get, continue this ball rolling. We're at two hours already uh, and we're only through three colors. There's 300 cards-ish in the new Lord of the Rings set. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, 